Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Imagineers Disney Podcast. I am your host, Matt, and I am joined, as always, by Susie. Hello, Matt. How are you doing? Oh, I am doing just grand. How about yourself? Uh, doing well. Doing well. I am just coming off a small little getaway to Walt Disney World. I had a great time over at Animal Kingdom Lodge. <sighs> I love the lodge. I've never stayed there. I have visited and it's just a really it's beautiful it is a gorgeous lobby uh in fact i think the architect was the same one who did wilderness lodge could be totally wrong on that but they look very similar as far as kind of like design and the height of the Mm -hmm. ceiling and all that stuff but um you know i think we'll actually do a uh, review of the animal kingdom lodge coming up and uh hopefully give you some insight into potentially choosing that for your next stay Cool. You see some animals? We did. We had a Savannah view room, and it was great. We saw giraffes from, like, afar. Mm -hmm. Like, we were there for a couple of nights, and, like, we're just, like, waiting for the giraffes to show up. (laughs) And, like, they never got close enough until the last second when we were about to leave the room to check out. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go double check. Pull back the curtain. Boom. Giraffe. Giraffe. I was going to say, did you do the, um giraffe sound like in the festival of the lion king to try to no i did not i did not do the bleeding yes (laughs) no no animal sounds were made all right but lots of pictures were taken glad y'all had fun really getting me hyped up for my trip um in a few weeks it'll be my birthday yay happy birthday thank you and what a better what better place to celebrate than uh at Disney World, right? Yeah, this will be my third birthday, uh, not in a row, that I've celebrated at Disney. You're going to wear the button of power? Uh, yeah. You get so many free little ice cream coupons with that. And for those of you who do not know what the button of power is, it's that nice little I'm celebrating button. My birthday. Or the happy birthday. It's actually a happy yeah. birthday button. Sorry. there is a Or like other people can get the I'm celebrating Susie's birthday. Yes. But it's like, oh. No, I'm not going to give you anything. Where's the birthday girl? And I'll be like, right here. Thank you. <laughs> so Great. I have to make ice cream coupon. I have to be very careful in how I say this because sometimes I've had very disappointed people saying that nothing happened. Oh, I, yeah. I've been there with people before when it's like they don't get too much on their birthday and it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. But at the same time, like you can't always guarantee like something's going to happen or you're going to get something that's just kind of what I can guarantee is that people life. will go out of their way to say happy birthday to you. And that is such a mood lifter. It just you will makes feel your special. Day. strangers tell you happy birthday. Cast members will tell you happy birthday, but it does increase your chance of a little extra magic. So sometimes you will, uh, in fact, the last time, that I went down for my birthday. Uh, We went into Gaston's Tavern. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a LeFou's brew for myself and for a friend of mine that I was with. And I went to pay for it. And they said, taken care of. Happy birthday. Nice. Uh, I still have like a month until our trip. I've got to stop getting so hyped up. Your trip's got me all excited. And tonight we're talking about food that... It's just, you know, just all the, all the Disney things. I'm like, let's go. Let's make it October 19th. Let's do this thing. That's not my actual birthday. That's the trip. If you're wanting to send me cars, my birthday's October 17th. So thank you in advance. <laughs> not kidding. Send all of the birthday greetings along. to my email and I will pass them along. To you. <laughs> anyway, so back to actual, back, let's get down to business. Down to business. So we have talked a lot about food over the past few weeks. So we we will take a break eventually, I promise, probably next week. Um, But uh, we are going to wrap up our Disney dining favorites for our favorite things. So we've gone over the quick service. We've gone over table service. We've done character dining. So we're going to wrap it up with signature dining. So for those of you who do not know what signature dining restaurants are at Walt Disney World, it is a handful of wonderful 
options that you can have if you are either on the dining plan or if you are just going to make a standard reservation off the dining plan. There are currently 14 signature dining locations around Walt Disney World parks and resorts with a 15th coming up here soon. The addition will be coming in the Japan Pavilion. There's going to be a signature dining location coming there. But the other ones are Jico over at Animal Kingdom Lodge, Flying Fish at Disney's Boardwalk, Citricos and Narcoozies at the Grand Floridian, Artist Point at Wilderness Lodge, which will be switching over to the character dining that we mentioned last week later on this year, Yachtsman over at Disney's Yacht and Beach Club Resort, wonderful steakhouse, then Epcot has Le Cellier and Monsieur Paul, which sits above Chefs de France on the second floor in the France Pavilion. Then Hollywood Brown Derby in Hollywood Studios, Tiffin's at Animal Kingdom Theme Park, and then over at Disney Springs we have the Boathouse, the Dining Room at Wolfgang Puck Grand Cafe, and Morimoto Asia. So for those of you counting at home, that is 13. So I have left one out. What's the 14th? The 14th and my top pick for signature dining at Walt Disney World is the California Grill at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Nice. So if you're also, I just want to mention, since normally I do ladies first, Susie. Yeah. Has, um. I have a confession to I've got to get this off my chest, guys. I've never been to a signature dining experience at Walt Disney World. But we are but, going to change that, hopefully. But soon. we are. I really, 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 really want to do one. And I'm really glad Matt's talking about California Grill because it's at my favorite um, resort, contemporary. It's a really cool location. The food sounds incredible. All the pictures and everything I've seen from it. Uh, just look fantastic. So what we'll do is we'll just make a, a day out of bucket lists. Matt will run a 5K with <laughs> Run Disney in the morning. We'll go and do Tower of Terror in the afternoon. And then I'll need a nap because I'll need to collect myself after screaming for like a minute and a half. Uh, and then we'll go get dinner at California Grill. But what about what about the kitchen sink at uh, Beaches and Cream? I know that was on the uh, list. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I can I mean, dessert. How can ice cream not be on your list? True. Well, you know, we'll pencil it in somewhere. We'll pencil it in. We'll, we'll make it happen. Because we, yeah. we might die if we try to do California Girl and then take on the kitchen sink all in one day. Maybe. It's extremely possible. Yes. So, California Girl. Well, let's talk about the ambiance, if you will, first. I so, will. I want to. Let's hear it. So, for those of you who do not know, if you uh, if you're riding the monorail into the Magic Kingdom, and you're going through the Contemporary, or if you're on the Resort Line and you are um, also going through the Contemporary, <laughs> uh, and you look up on the outside of the building, way up at the top of the Resort is like this. These big windows. Well, that, friends, is California Grill. That is where it's located. Up on the 15th floor, you will have this restaurant. And so you take an elevator up to the floor. And as soon as you step off the elevator, smack dab right in front of you is one of their big, I guess you could say, set pieces, like their decorating pieces. It is a wine display. And it boasts 1,600 bottles of wine. I'll just go ahead and mention the wine list that they have. So if you are a wine connoisseur, there are 250 wines on the list. 80 are available by the glass. And there are over 20 sommeliers on staff to help you select the best wine for your meal to pair with your dishes and desserts. So... Uh, these are experts. So if that is important to you, this is a great place to have that experience. The 
overall kind of vibe of the restaurant is is a pretty contemporary. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> it's, in the contemporary. it's in the contemporary. <laughs> uh-huh. Funny. So, but um, when you walk in, there's actually uh, a bar that wraps around. Now, this is important to note because you technically do not need a reservation to sit at the bar. If you go up to the bar and sit down, um, you have access to the entire menu at California Grill. So that is one way of skirting the 180-day reservation window for this restaurant or any restaurant at Walt Disney World. Mm. It's just that there's no guarantee that there is going to be available space at the bar. So. Just keep that in mind. But uh, it, it is, I think that this restaurant offers maybe the best viewing experience of any restaurant in Walt Disney World. You are on the 15th floor of the Contemporary and you are overlooking Magic Kingdom. And if you actually go sit in the old uh, wine room that they had, you're going to be looking great views of Bay Lake. So it is a phenomenal experience to just be surrounded by... Just uh, take it all in. Just take it all in. And uh, another important thing to note is that they do have an observation deck. So right when Happily Ever After starts, you can go out onto the deck and take in the fireworks. They pump in the music, the soundtrack, and you get to hear... Uh, the show and see the show oh from one of the most unique viewing locations at the parks. So we may have to get ice cream first and just have a really late dinner so that we can be there during the show. Well, actually, you don't need to have a dining reservation at the time of the fireworks to experience the fireworks. Oh my gosh, are you serious? This is not a transition. I. T- I didn't know that. That's so cool. Sometimes we plan transitions, but this is actually legitimate this was so shock legit. and awe. legit. Oh my gosh. Like <laughs> jaw, jaw drop. I know that doesn't make a sound, but if y'all can see my face, like what? So if you have an earlier reservation at the California Grill, so say it's, you know, five o'clock for dinner, and obviously you're going to end your dinner before the fireworks show at the Magic Kingdom, keep your receipt and go about your business for a couple hours. And then come back up the elevator and just show the staff there your receipt. And you will be able to uh, see the fireworks. Also, if you have a late dining reservation at California Grill, just uh, you can show up a little early and just tell them that you want to go see the fireworks. They'll check make sure that you have a reservation. And uh, then you can actually go out on the observation deck and view it and then have your reservation. Pretty cool stuff. That is cool. So, wow. So, moving on to the actual menu. So, uh, the California Grill is only open for dinner, with the exception of brunch on Sunday. So, the brunch begins at 10 a.m. on Sunday and runs to 1 o'clock p.m. So, the brunch price is a little, little steep. <laughs> Uh, for guests ages 10 and over, it is $80 plus tax. And then guests 3 to 9, it is $48 plus tax. But let me tell you, it's going to be worth it. Worth it. It's going to be worth it. It's pretty great. One of one of the things to take into consideration, the California Grill, because they really do care about quality, and it is why it's my favorite restaurant and you're really going to see this in a lot of signature restaurants the the menu can change so uh, occasionally there will be some changes on the menu so what we say here may not be what is exactly on the menu on your next visit to the restaurant but as for right now uh, the brunch menu uh, for the table so they will bring assortment of pastries they have their California Grill Signature Brunch Cocktail, and they also have a house-made jam and orange blossom honey butter, which is going to go great with your pastries. Then uh, they have self-serve selection, so this is going to be more buffet style, so you can actually go back and get as much as you want. So you have, uh, they have a nice charcuterie selection, 
They have deviled eggs. They have Greek yogurt. There is a bacon and egg salad, which includes greens, has quinoa, avocado, cherry wood bacon, um, sherry vinaigrette, and egg. And then they have a hardwood smoked salmon. So, I mean, when you have wow. smoked salmon on a buffet, I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on. Mm. Yeah. Shrimp tempura. And then your entree selection, so you'll be able to choose one of these. They have a crispy fried chicken thigh. And yeah. so in this, it, there's a lot of like Asian flair to the menu at California Girls. So this is actually going to be a Korean style sweet and spicy sauce that comes with the chicken thigh and actually has house made kimchi. Ooh, Okay. So have you had kimchi before? I, I have had kimchi. Okay. Um, I will I will always give something a try once. Yes. I'm I'm I believe that is important. <laughs> it's not for me. I've had it before, but um It's not my favorite. Uh no, I'm not, but I'm not a big sauerkraut fan, so I knew I was probably not going to particularly care for it. Apparently but, it's got a lot of like health benefits. But... Yes. Uh, it's, so it's fermented cabbage. So yeah. it is basically like sauerkraut, but instead, uh, the Korean style of it, they add a lot of spices into it. That's so really interesting. They with take the cabbage. I yep, want to try that. They ferment the cabbage. Sometimes, like if it's like legit kimchi, it'll be for like two or three months. They'll put it in a jar, put all the spices in, and then they'll bury it in the ground. And then three months later, kimchi. <laughs> So, kimchi time. Kimchi time. So, uh, so that, that that is an interesting dish, but you're gonna have more standard. They have blueberry pancakes. They have vanilla bean French toast. They also have carrot cake pancakes. Oh my gosh, you guys! Cream I cheese. Want that so I want that right now. Like maple <laughs> bourbon incredible. syrup and pecans. Now, are you a pecan person or a pecan? I'm a pecan person because pecan, I know how to read. <laughs> and that most definitely is the word pecan. Oh, boy. We they, digress. <laughs> they also have buttermilk pancakes and uh, eggs benedict. They have a grilled hanger steak, which comes with two eggs, any style that you want, chimichurri, marble potato hash, charred red onion. They have an omelet selection, so three eggs, um, and then... Marble potato hash, Toscano vinaigrette, choice of garden spinach, uh, lobster omelet. So these are some high-end omelets. Just, yeah. So, I mean, the brunch is amazing. And then uh, for those of you who like wine and cocktails, they do have a nice selection for those as well for the brunch, uh, including like a Bellini, they have a gin and tonic, and a lemon teeny. And then... Under the sweet endings section, they have some chocolate truffles, macarons. So overall, a really, really nice brunch. I mean, yeah, maybe the best brunch experience. I know that we've mentioned. A Are you trying to throw shade trails. at Trails End? I'm not trying to show throw <laughs> shade at Trails End, but this this brunch will be a little this bit this is different. a more culinary experience yes there you instead go instead of just load your gut on mickey waffles and mac and cheese brunch like that is a that, that is a good way to put it it is a culinary experience so. <laughs> not a load your gut very <laughs> eloquent speaking there <laughs> right uh so moving on to the dinner menu so like i said some of these things may change uh they when I visited in January, they actually uh, brought out some pizzas for us. They had a mm. wonderful pepperoni pizza, and these are all like flatbread pizzas. Ooh. And uh, it's not going to be the flatbread pizza that you get at Pinocchio's Village House in no, Magic this Kingdom. Sounds... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the like pepperoni the has like house made pepperoni. Oh my uh, gosh. Asiago cheese, Parmesan cheese, mozzarella, uh, basil and oregano. I mean, it's it's so great. And then um, they also have um, like a, a, the one that's called the Farmer, 
It has house cured pancetta, roasted garlic, and it actually has a soft cooked egg on it and arugula. So like interesting. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. So these are not your typical pizzas. I wouldn't think so. You're going a uh, signature dining, even something like a pizza gets taken to you know, the next level. Yeah, and you know, very much like the pizzas that you can get over at Via Napoli in Epcot in mm-hmm. World Showcase. They have a wood burning oven. In fact, the entire, uh, when they redesigned this restaurant, it, uh, they actually redesigned it uh, fairly recently. They made the kitchen, it's it's an open kitchen. You can see them making the dishes. I love that. That just, yeah. So you know, experience. It goes right back to that. It goes for that. all your dishes. Uh, you can see the sushi being hand rolled. I mean, it is open air and you can see everything. So it just adds a nice little... Uh, touch to the dining experience but um, also they have a nice charcuterie selection Uh, one of the ones that really stuck out to me last time and uh, there was one that had it had pistachio in it like it was in the in the meat but it was so good like I wasn't expecting wasn't expecting that so Hmm. then I mentioned that they have sushi maybe the best sushi at Walt Disney World. So they have, uh, you know, they have like a, a California roll. They have lots of tuna. They have uh, one that's called a new moon roll. So it has Maine lobster, avocado, barbecue eel, rice pearls, and uh, a drag. It's called dragon sauce. So. Hmm. So now these rolls, because of their high quality, are going to be uh, a little expensive on the pricier side, but they are very filling. They nice big pieces. These aren't going to be small pieces. Nice big pieces. The rolls can range from $22 all the way up to the most expensive roll, which is $27. And another thing that they actually have is sashimi. And for those of you listening at home who maybe have not heard of sashimi, don't know what it is, like this is like legit Japanese sushi. So these are bite-sized pieces of raw fish. So, I mean, this is going to be raw fish and it's usually served with soy sauce and a wasabi paste. Uh, And over at the California Grill, the sashimi that they offer, they have tuna, salmon, hamachi, octopus, and uh, it comes with rice. So um, these are authentic sushi options at California Grill, and they are phenomenal. They also offer several soup, salads, and appetizers. They have artisanal cheese, a nice artisanal cheese board. They have a roasted tomato soup. They have have a rotisserie smoked beef short rib that also comes with a mango kimchi, which is interesting. Ooh, yeah, that sounds really good. Mango would make it nice and sweet. Mm -hmm. They have a Sonoma goat cheese ravioli. Stop it. So good. good. Yes. Gosh. And then maybe some of the best entrees that you can find. And, you know, that's what really sets these restaurants apart. Um, You're going to be paying more. And I will mention that if you're on the Disney dining plan, these are going to be two credits. So this is going to count as two of your table service credits. Be careful with that in planning your reservations for your table service meals. So uh, just don't be confused. These will cost uh, two table service credits because if you're paying out of pocket, you are going to be paying uh, on the low end around $37 and on the high end $75 for your entrees. So just a quick glance at the current entrees that are available at the restaurant. They have a black grouper. They have a salmon dish. They have a rack of lamb. They have uh, your grill, uh, a grilled, nice grilled chicken breast. They have a grilled pork tenderloin. They have something called seafood spaghetti, which is actually Key West shrimp, cedar key clams, mussels, octopus, charred fennel, in a lobster broth. 
and then they have uh, yellowfin tuna, and then they have uh, currently two steak options. There is the oak-fired filet, which is what I actually had last time when I was at California Grill. Amazing. Probably one of the best uh, steaks that I've ever had at Disney. I mean, you can literally, like, cut this thing with a fork. So tender, so delicious. Currently, the sides that come with this, it is a fried herb gnocchi, a tomato piquillo jam, smoked pickled pearl onion, and blood orange butter. It is a wonderful, wonderful You know the dish. more, like, like adjectives and hyphens in a dish? Like, you just know the better is going so to taste. Fancy. So fancy. It's a this dash this dash this jam with a this orange blood butter you know, not actual blood. I don't know. Maybe blood is a steak if you want it rare. <laughs> um, and for my personal preference, I always do medium rare. Oh. I think that is the perfect way to cook a steak. Anything over medium is too much, people. It's too too cooked. I'm not a big beef fan, but sure. No, I, I hear that's also like the just general like best way of get all the flavor that way. Staking. Staking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just created a verb. Copyright Imagine Years Podcast, two thousand eighteen. Hashtag staking. <laughs> speaking of, sounds really violent. <laughs> speaking of steak. The last dish, and this is the the one that was seventy five dollars, but just listen to what you get with this. I mean, ugh, oh, um, it is a cowboy cut 19 ounce ribeye steak. 19, 19 ounce? ounces. Oh my gosh. So you could totally share this with someone else. I mean, Hey, but if you have the appetite, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> but it also includes honey, saffron glazed carrots. And for, any of you who don't know what saffron is, it is one of the, I don't want to call it rare, but it is one of the most expensive spices yeah. that you can find in the world. I think like just an ounce of it is like ridiculous. Something like yeah, $35 an a, ounce. I used to work at a grocery store and I remember getting spices and, and different things and I was like, oh my gosh, saffron, like dang. So that sounds really good honey glaze honey saffron glaze like yum and i'm not sure if you guys are ready for this or not i'm not, I'm not sure if you're ready if you are a, if you are a mac and cheese fan and i know this may sound weird at a signature restaurant having mac and cheese but ladies and gentlemen let me let me tell you uh their mac and cheese has aged gouda it is an aged Gouda mac and cheese. And sometimes when this is not even on the menu, I'm like, hey, can can, can you make that for me and like have that instead? <laughs> of? So it's something that you want to do. And then uh, the butter for the steak is actually a triple garlic butter. <sighs> so if you're not full Your enough. It's going to sell so funky after that. <laughs> So Between if you, the saffron and the butter. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Strong spice. Gouda. Yep. And cheese and everything. And a mint. Thank you. And if you're not full enough after the appetizers and the main dish, leave room for dessert because they are also going to have some wonderful options. And like even looking at this, some of the stuff has actually changed since I was there last. Um, I am actually a creme brulee like connoisseur. I love creme brulee. It is God's gift to dessert lovers <laughs> around the world. Um, the last time I was there, they actually had a orange cream sickle creme brulee. Wow. Yeah. So it was like uh, it was you know a vanilla bean creme brulee, mm -hmm. and then they had like these orange flavored like little pearls on top, and then a white chocolate macadamia nut like little mini cookies uh looks like the one that they have currently on the menu is actually a uh, masumoto peach creme brulee so it is a vanilla bean creme brulee with fresh peaches lemon thyme oat crumble and cinnamon sponge cake croutons so sounds delicious 
And then in addition to that, they have a carrot cheesecake. So it's candied carrot ribbons, spiced walnuts, and pineapple compote. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Two of my favorite things. Then they have a chocolate cherry pistachio sundae. So they have uh, cherry ice cream, house-made waffle shell, uh, and it has a brownie, and then uh, warm cherry compote and pistachios. And then uh, for those of the who kind of like ice cream, Susie? Oh, yeah, that's definitely us. Well, uh, <laughs> this is actually a sorbet. Yeah, close enough, right? That's just fancy ice cream. They have a, <laughs> uh, and it's very fancy. It is a blackberry lime sorbet. Oh, gosh. So I'm sure that is nice and tart and delicious. So typically, uh, I would recommend that you do not take kids to uh, these restaurants. It is a signature dining. Most people who are there are going to be people who are celebrating their anniversary, mm -hmm. some even their honeymoon, special occasions. Now, I know some that... Some people who just want to eat yeah. and peace yes so now, it just it just sounds like it's you know you're at the contemporary you have the views of magic kingdom you're at disney but just this menu and the atmosphere it it's like its own little bubble almost of like at disney and it's disney but it's kind of a little a different yeah. vibe yeah it just yeah and like i would never say don't take your kids but consider not taking your kids <laughs> In fact, it's very convenient because right downstairs they have a new wonderful kids program. It's the Pixar Play Zone, which is located down on the same floor as uh, Chef Mickey's and uh, the Outer Rim and Contempo Cafe. So just around the corner from there is the Pixar Play Zone. And this is for children ages 4 to 12. It's $65 total. But it also includes, like, their meal. And it's babysitting. So you're, you're kind of going to be kind of hard-pressed to find a babysitter for, for that price. Yeah. But, yes, um, that is an option for you if you are have your kids with you and you just kind of want to have some alone time and just have a nice meal together. That is a valid option for your kids. So, but if you have your kids with you and um, you are taking them to the restaurant, they do have some great kid options. So they do have a uh, provolone cheese pizza and house-made macaroni and cheese. And then in addition to that, they actually have what are called uh, the Kids Mickey Check Meals. So uh, for those of you who don't know what these are, they're actually uh, meals that have been verified to be more healthy so they take a look at like the trans fat and how much calories and uh so they have a chicken breast meal that's 15 dollars. it's a citrus glazed grilled chicken breast with steamed green beans um, sweet potatoes seasonal fruit kebabs and freshly made yogurt dip and then they have a salmon dish that has uh seared salmon green beans um rice and a seasonal fruit kebabs for that as well. And then a grilled beef tenderloin, which comes with uh, the green beans, sweet potatoes, ketchup sauce. <laughs> That's what it says, ketchup Is sauce. Is that the signature dining code for ketchup packet? Yes. Or like so, ketchup out um, of the packet, like in a glass bottle, so you know it's like fancy? They're really fancy at the contemporary, so they not... They don't just have ketchup. They have ketchup sauce. Ketchup sauce. And you squeeze it out of the, the little thing with your pinky in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fruit kebabs come with that as well. And the yogurt dip to go along with it. And then uh, all of these meals come with a choice of a small low-fat milk or a small Dasani water. And like we said, all of these meals meet the Disney nutrition guidelines. Huh. <sighs> <laughs> hungry yet like my goodness right the signature options at disney are just really special i mean I, I know that i've singled out one of these but they're all phenomenal i mean i have i've eaten at some of them uh, I, i've eaten at Gico and had an excellent meal tiffin's is one of the best 
park meals that I've ever had. I mean, you're having this quality inside a theme park is just incredible. Um, then Morimoto Asia and the Boathouse over at Disney Springs. So if you don't have park admission to where some of these are actually in the park, like Tiffin's, go over to Disney Springs. There are some really great options over there. Morimoto and Asia and Boathouse are actually two of my favorite places to eat at Disney, and those are over at uh, Disney Springs, so head on over there if that piques your interest. Um, but, yeah, I mean, easily the best dining experiences at Disney for all of these restaurants. It was difficult narrowing it down to one, but I think that with the overall um, theming, uh, the, dec the decor, the food itself, just the fresh options, uh, the seasonal options, and then, of course, the view. I mean... Kind of hard to go wrong with the view. This is my number one restaurant, so yeah, check that out. Well, Susie, I think that's going to wrap up our discussion on food for a while, hopefully. I think, it, yeah, it's pretty extensive. We covered everything from like $12, um, you know, like falafels in Morocco all the way up to $72 steaks at the California Grill. I think, and everything in between. That just goes to show that there is something for every budget at Walt Disney World, mm -hmm. and there are great options for every budget. So just because you're doing a quick service doesn't mean you can't eat good. Yeah, it's still really delicious. Yeah, I mean, uh, when we actually went to Epcot this past weekend, we didn't. It was hot, so you know, mm. I'll, I'll, we did food and wine the day before, but we're like. Eh. We just want to go sit down for a little bit. And we went over to Sunshine Seasons and had a really nice lunch. And it yeah. was delicious. And, you know, all those vegetables are coming from the land. Yeah, I love that. It's a really cool uh, touch getting to know right where your food came from. You know, 30 feet over there. Yes. But we uh, hope we haven't made you too hungry. I hope we have. Go try new stuff. Go try new things. Branch out. Be adventurous. And remember that you can start making reservations for these restaurants 180 days in advance. And always remember that if you are booking with me or one of my fellow agents over at Travel Nation, we are ready to go for you. We are ready to go to bat for you for your dining reservations at 6 a.m. So you don't have to. So if you are looking at booking a vacation to Walt Disney World, shoot me an email with your name and info and when you would like to go and I can start getting you some quotes. My email is matt at imagineerspodcast.com and I think that is going to do it for today's episode. Thank you for listening and if you have enjoyed listening to this episode, please go rate us. We are on iTunes. We are on Stitcher. We are on Google Play. So we are on a wide variety of uh platforms for you to enjoy and listen to the podcast and if you are not a subscriber go ahead and join in and subscribe to the podcast so that way you can get automatic updates for our podcast and once again we are also on social media and we'd love to hear from you we love for you to get in on the conversation what have you uh, enjoyed most about these uh, dining discussions what are you most looking forward to trying when you go on your next trip we love to hear from you, and we just want to thank you again so much for listening. And until next time, remember, if you can dream it, you can do it. Yeah.